Oh, hi there. Uh, I wanted to elaborate a bit more on um, my opinion on where uh, NHL hockey jerseys should be made and why I think they should be made in Mexico. Uh, I had uh, made vocal some points that I uh, had already thought of. However, this is a continual subject within my uh, within my day-to-day uh, -day thought that um, the industry would be better off in Mexico. For one thing, the Mexicans are actually not bad at making clothing. Uh, I bought my brother uh, a uh, Metallica shirt earlier today, um, and it was superbly made. And there's no reason they couldn't do that other than you know legal restrictions contract obligations with uh, the Indonesian um, capitalist um, class as well as the government and military because those are all linked together as is with most countries but you know look the other way on that one um, the thing is an argument I heard which is kind of dumb is that um, the reason why it wouldn't be such a good idea is because they're actually trying to increase the standard of living for Mexico, increase the um, the, the the wages for, for Mexican employees. Therefore, it would not be cost effective to uh, have uh, the uh, manufacturing companies move to Mexico. That I don't believe. I believe it's contractual obligations and you know pick me little third world countries like Indonesia who will pull a shit fit if we if the National Hockey League pulls out of uh, the um, deal they made it with Indonesia and I have said on social media they made a deal with the National Hockey League they didn't make a deal with me and that is you know the deciding factor here because I actually will be vocal about it and there are many key points I can make which will dismantle the whole ideological belief that um, you know uh, the Indonesians are supposed to be trusted you can't even trust them to make a subway sandwich let alone uh, you know clothing that people will be wearing although these ones are of high quality at what cost that, you know, is information that is not often discussed or ever discussed, as a matter of fact, in the public eye. So, rest assured, it's a lot of bad things. And um, there's always coddlers and uh, people uh, using the quotations, oh, we want to do less harm, we want to help people around the world and things like that. We don't help military regimes that uh, openly... Uh, to our government, not publicly, but if you have half a brain, you'll understand, um, threaten the democracy of the Western Axis powers. We don't do it willingly. I mean, there are some people who think that um, uh, within the Western powers that think that it's a good idea to deal with Asia. I would happen to be an individual who will be the front man who decides that that is not a good idea. That they're not to be trusted. Uh, not what a bag filled with Mars bars, not to make a Subway sandwich, nothing about them is to be trusted. And it will be cost effective because um, Mexico, although a poor country, actually in some ways is not a poor country. Uh, they have their own advantages too. It's, it's a different system over there, of course. So, you know, they have a lot of disadvantages, more disadvantages than the United States and um, you know a whole lot less than the uh, Canadians however uh, they do have their advantages and yes they have you know probably a lot more sketchy streets and things like that and they rely heavily on their tourism industry why anybody wants to sit on a beach in the baking hot sun I have no idea why but uh, people like doing that stuff, and you know, like that's their business. I'm not going to tell them not to. But uh, fun fact about uh, people who go to Mexico and go, yeah, I'm going there for like the weather, man, and like surfs up, dude. And it's like, oh, really? What what other reasons are you going there for? 
You go in there because you like their cuisine? Or do you like things that are on their menu that uh, technically aren't food? They're uh, recreational. I have never been to Mexico. I have no interest in ever going to Mexico. And guess what? In particular, um, there are low-level uh, medical professionals who don't make a lot of money who go to Mexico. And the beach isn't the only reason they go there. Uh, they like to go to the parties, the raves, the drugs. And, you know, I'm of the belief that, you know, Mexico is a colony of Europe. And Spain, under the table, is ran by the British. At least at some point it will be to an entirety, if not, you know, for the most part right now. And there's no reason the United States cannot control Mexico. And I don't want to hear all oh, this sovereignty crap. And, you know, um, they have the right to self-determination as a, you know, a fat, stupid pig by the name of Jason Unruh, uh, who pretends to be a socialist while he fucking, you know, probably eats 10 cheeseburgers a day, uh, would say. Uh, no, if they're threatening economic war, if they're threatening street-to-street um, -street, uh, gang activity, uh, if not, you know, making um, belligerent um, uh, military threats against uh, the Western power axis, uh, the United States government will and can go in there and, um, you know, really tell them what for. And I told you as before, it doesn't actually matter if Donald Trump builds that wall physically or not. So long as the Mexicans do not um, migrate north, and if global uh, warming is a factor in, in their decision making, rather than an economic one, um, it still doesn't matter. If they're not allowed to come up here for whatever reasons, then we don't have to build a wall. Donald Trump doesn't have to build a physical wall. That's called uh, being a businessman. And... Uh, you know, uh, the thing is, a lot of those low-level uh, medical professionals who don't really have the money to go anywhere, you know, good uh, as far as a vacation goes, they like to go to Mexico. And uh, they're able to lie, but they're not actually that good at it anyway. And, like, their superiors, they know, right? They know uh, why these people go there. And these people are fucking dumber than a bag of fucking sand that they're sitting on while they're on the beach fucking, you know, uh, drinking a, a Kahlua, you know, and uh, picking up all the germs from the dirty fucking water that's around there. Because uh, their water's different. And, you know, I guess you build a tolerance if you go to that rat's nest often enough. But, uh, you know, I would never go there without a solid team I could trust uh, with the express purpose of uh, you know getting a manufacturing company to the manufacturing companies of you know NHL merchandise to move to Mexico and obviously that means uh, in doing the dirty deal like that that would mean pff, I'm never going to Asia I'd never go there anyway but um, I most certainly wouldn't, after I shafted them out of billions of dollars, you know, over over probably decades or whatever. And, um, yeah, they're poverty-stricken um, third-world countries in, in Southeast Asia and in China, too, uh, for the most part. However, does that mean I'm supposed to give a fuck? Let me think. I'm going to roll through my Rolodex of reasons in my head for giving a fuck about something. Nope, not there. Um, my reason for giving a fuck, there isn't one for uh, business operations being removed from Southeast Asia and being placed into Mexico. There isn't one. And, you know, some people go, oh, why, you cold-hearted bastard. You like being mean to people, don't you? Well, those same people wouldn't care if I was, uh, you know, I drowned in a latrine or something. So, uh, you know, aside from all that, there's a lot of people, and they're all 
different colors, shapes and sizes, and, um, you know, financial backgrounds and all that sort of stuff, who deserve a great giant fuck off. That's what they deserve. They deserve a fuck off. And they can turn around and say, you know, Paul Osiris would go, fuck on, fuck on. But it don't make no difference. They ain't got no business. Uh, especially after I explain to people, like, like why should we give business to people in South uh, East Asia? At least there's some, you know, even with Donald Trump as president, there is some camaraderie uh, amongst us with the Mexicans. Although it doesn't seem like that a lot of the time there actually is. And we can most certainly manufacture that by um, taking control over their media. Uh, it's not like uh, American television doesn't make its way into the, into Mexico anyway. Um, and, you know, it's a very turbulent time. And this is our way of softening the blow that, um, you know, this whole make Texas uh, Mexico again argument. Uh, you know, reparations and making things fair. Excuse me, but fuck you. Uh, we're not letting you steal, um, essentially, white man's land um, for your own benefit, masqueraded by uh, oppression uh, in centuries past. Uh, you can take that sanctimonious bag of bullshit and go someplace else. Preferably, you could stay where the fuck you are, which is away from me. Because uh, I don't give a damn, and I'm sure Donald Trump doesn't give a damn, and I'm sure a lot of other people don't give a damn, and I'm sure there are people who don't give a damn who are like Justin Trudeau who would pretend that they do, and they don't, actually. And, um, you know, I, I look at people who... Uh, you know, flock to places like Mexico because they want cheap alcohol, they want this, they want that. And I go, you're scum. I don't care what happens to you. I'm personally not bothered by you if the Mexican army, you know, goes nuts and decides that um, they don't like the deal that Donald Trump has uh, pitched um, for, um, you know, what's best in uh, the United States uh, financial uh, sector. Uh, you get what you got coming, whether you knew it or you or you didn't, because if you're going to places like Southeast Asia or Mexico to do things that um, you know you're not allowed to do in a civilized country, uh, doesn't matter who you are, why you're doing it, or any of that shit, you get what you fucking deserve. Team America, World Police, fuck you. And, um, you know, that that is a bit cold. I do feel a little bit bad about that. But it's like, there are a lot of people out there, you try to talk sense to them, and they're just not going to fucking listen. Uh, because they're cunts. They're stupid cunts. And they will not listen. Um, there is one National Hockey League organization, which I believe would be on board for this, simply because a lot of... People of Mexican origin go to this particular place because they have cash rather than credit. And cash is easier to make uh, disappear in the numbers uh, rather than credit cards. And that place is dun, 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 Vegas Golden Knights. I think they'd be down for the idea of moving uh, National Hockey League merchandise over to Mexico. They're also a new organization. They don't have the ironclad ties to Southeast Asia as uh, a lot of other National Hockey League organizations. Um, they're establishing them because uh, you know they're for the profit, and that's the way the tide's going, uh, according to the um, current media apparatus. Uh, you know, with Justin Trudeau uh, spreading his ass cheeks wide to everybody in the world and saying, come on in. And it's like, uh, no, we don't need a leader that does things like that. And it doesn't matter what his reasons for doing things like that are. He is an incompetent prime minister. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter 
if uh, you know he went to all these fancy schools and he knows a bunch of dirty tricks as far as uh, psychology, uh, persuasive tactics. Not that he is persuasive, um, because the thing is, almost every single argument there is to be had in the world that's of any significance, uh, somebody can if they have access to the information and they happen to know somebody's uh, current educational stance. Uh, based on who they are, where they are, went to, where they went to school, and yada, yada, yada. And they pull up all this evidence going, oh, look at all the good things that are happening in Southeast Asia because of our, um, because of uh, what we've been doing. We've been trying to help and this and that. And look how nice they are in these situations. All you have to do is deflate that little bubble and go, yeah, you take your rhetoric. Uh, your pointed cryptic rhetoric and you know trying to talk to me like I'm an idiot and you can take all your rhetoric and stick it right up your ass and I hope it's prickly because it isn't going to sell with me uh, they can bombard anybody with any kind of imagery and um you know persuade them of anything unless you know that's exactly what they're doing and usually they're not very clever about it uh because if they want to explain things from an unbiased perspective they have a tendency to um uh, have to omit things that they wouldn't would rather not do um you know there will be information that uh about certain things uh, like what life is really like for the average person in Southeast Asia and you know what gangs like the Yakuza the triads and any other ones anyone could possibly think of really think about Westerners uh, yeah you would have to incorporate that into the discussion and when you do that um, Justin Trudeau and his porcelain mask will start to crack he will be shown for what he is exactly. And, you know, um, that is the facts. So he's the kind of guy who only wants to show the nice, kindly, considered individual. And anyone who he deems as bad, such as a white supremacist, such as myself, um, you know, it doesn't matter if society shuns them. It's about everyone being treated fairly, except white supremacists. Then that's different. You can be a supremacist of your race unless you're white. Um, or you're selling your own people down the drain and you're pretending that uh, you're not a racist. Like Justin Trudeau. So you uh, take those things into consideration. You go, this prime minister is one dumb bastard. Is he ever a fucking halfwit? Like seriously, he... he like layered it on thick with his uh, you know discussions of oh people kind lgbtkfctz and all that kind of stuff and it's like he did it so thick that like it's plain as day obvious and then you know he starts blaming the russians for hacking and things like that and he hammers on the same message every fucking day and it's like what are you retarded you can't fucking tell a proper story I don't know about that guy. He would be a fucking hurdle as far as uh, getting business operations moved to Mexico. And not Donald Trump. Yeah, Kel Sabri. Uh It would be Justin Trudeau who would fuck up plans to give Mexicans more work. Take that in your fucking weed bong and smoke it. Uh, you fucking stupid stoners. Um, and, you know, getting back to the whole, uh, you know, sketchy nature of, uh, you know, Mexico and to a greater extent Southeast Asia, where there's less, uh, United States involvement, uh, yeah, um, it's the Team America mentality. Because something is okay to do over there, it does not mean, uh, you should be allowed to leave the United States to go vacation over there, do those things, and then come back. You want to do those things? You stay there.
fuck off. We don't need you in our country. And um, not only that, but, um, you know, uh, the Western powers, um, which would uh, be the Canadian government, the United States government, uh, the UK, Australia, South Africa, uh, Argentina, possibly, <laughs> I don't know, uh, and to an extent some other ones like France and uh, Switzerland and Sweden and Germany and uh, sometimes Russia, but not always Russia. Uh, if they tell you you're not allowed to do something, you're not allowed to do it. That means you go to a country and do something they told you not to do, then it does, when you arrive back, you should pay the consequences of it. And it doesn't matter if you're, uh, you know, a trained person who knows how to lie their way through the system. Uh, no, you are guilty of, uh, crimes that, uh, are uh, not appropriate to um, what the, the countries I listed, uh, the standards that they uh, allow. There are laws for reasons. And, um, you know, the other question is, where does it stop when people go to places like Southeast Asia, when they go to places like Mexico? Like, where does it stop? Like... How far, how, how far do they take it? Because they know the ins and outs of uh, the legal system. And then, you know, that's when the problem starts to really unravel. And, you know, a lot of people, they go, oh, it's benign, whatever. I'm doing a respectable, honorable job. When I come back, who cares if I tell a little white lie? There are some people who do care, you stupid asshole. And, um... If you want to be a stupid asshole, and you're only slightly more intelligent than, uh, you know, stupid assholes with no authority, then unfortunately, you are still a stupid asshole. Except you have the title of being slightly less of a stupid asshole than stupid assholes with no authority. You're still a stupid asshole. And, uh, you know, I, I am fully cognizant of the fact that moving industries from Southeast Asia, which I'm not the first white guy to suggest that idea, not to buy a long shot, uh, is going to piss people off. Nike, they just made, you know, somewhat of a splash on uh, the stock market and things like that. You know, a lot of people just don't give a rat's ass. But, uh, and, you know, they got their reasons and they're there for um, capitalist interests and, you know, decision making of old. Uh, which put them in a compromised position, and you know you got to take all that shit into consideration. But if you are threatening uh, the United States government with economic problems, along with Canada and all the other countries I listed, then it doesn't really matter who you are. You you are a potential problem for the United States economically wise. And I am saying the best way to keep the Mexicans from migrating north into the United States, and then eventually into Canada as well, um, is to give them economic incentive. Give them the ability to make NHL hockey jerseys where it actually cools their body down as they wear it. And, you know, this can be done vice versa too, where, you know, you don't have to be wearing that much clothing at all. There are synthetic materials that can regulate your body temperature, um, you know, it's all about making it cost effective. The ability to do so uh, has been thought of a long time ago, and it's all about making it cost effective. Kind of like uh, in the Iron Man movie where, you know, uh, Tony Stark was able to make that, I don't know what the hell you'd call that thing, that spark or whatever that powered his suit, and the scientists were able to create a giant one, but they didn't know how to make it smaller. It's the same mentality. And, like, yes, as I was saying, I know it's going to piss off a lot of people and not uh, people that, um, you know, like being pissed off. But, you know, it is, it's the rational decision to make. And they got to look at it this way. If I push through, you know, my agenda of um, moving um, the correct industries over to Mexico and giving Mexicans the jobs that uh, they're good at, you know, keeping them busy, you know, improving their economy, 
and the fact is other factors as well where you know like uh um structural integrity and uh the ability to uh, repair uh infrastructure uh, would be a lot easier if it were in Mexico as opposed to left up to the Indonesian uh, military and other Southeast Asia countries. They're not going to like that, but there's a lot of things they don't like about the United States already, so they can go fuck themselves. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's some food for thought. Um... Because it's not that uh, the United States should abandon its outlying colonies. It's more to do with, are they cost-effective anymore? Because the thing is, sure, in places like Indonesia, the people who work for the companies are basically slaves. Uh, for the most part, basically slaves. Maybe slightly more paid than uh, the cotton pickers of, uh, of old. Uh, but... Um, you know, they're still essentially slaves. And, um, you know, there are capitalists within Asia that are making too much money. And you can always tell when, you know, like a bad subject and they make a comedy out of it. There was a movie that came out. It was like Super Rich Asians or Rich Asians or something like that. And it's like, I am not watching that movie. There is no chance I am watching that movie. If somebody purchased it and said, let's all watch that movie, um, it'd be like, look over there, look over there. What is that? Why, it looks like a door that leaves the building that you're in. You're correct. You win a prize. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I find that utterly hilarious. I don't mean, like, the guys that would get screwed over that are in the Western Powers going like, look, man, we just went with the flow and, you know, you're fucking up our program over here. You help me out? Maybe maybe, uh, maybe you'll take things into consideration later on. Try to fuck me over, though, with my plan. And maybe I'll take that into consideration later. Anyway, um, that is my take. Um... There are two final things I wanted to make. Uh, and one of them being the sponsor of the day. <laughs> Raisin brand, Kellogg's. It's delicious, filled with fiber. It's also got, um, you know, like iron and calcium in it. It's, it's sunshine. It's, it's, it, it's great. It tastes amazing, and it, you know, gets people used to eating raisins. We like eating raisins. The raisins are awesome. And there ain't too terribly much sugar in this one. And, uh, yeah, that's what we like. We like Kellogg's. Kellogg's is a good brand. So that's the sponsor of the day. And um, on one final note, Decepticons forever, fuckers. Anyway, uh... Talk to you assholes later. Have a good one.